Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, as you probably saw by the title, we are going to be once again reorganizing and cleaning out my sewing room. It's pitch black outside. The lighting in this video is probably terrible, but as it's kind of like a casual video, I hope that's okay with you guys. I'm also filming it on my phone because my camera doesn't do well in low lighting and I just thought this was a little bit easier. So for today's video, please excuse the poor quality lighting and filming setup. I did some reorganizing last year around this time, right at the beginning of 2022. Currently I'm filming this on December 30th um, and I find the new year always inspires me to get organized and my sewing space is kind of at an all-time level of disarray. So I thought today that it would be fun for us to clean my sewing space together. I also kind of want to reorganize it. Right now, I don't have a great spot in my apartment to film my videos. It gets, my apartment gets tons of natural light, which is really nice, but, but there just aren't a lot of like good corners or nice backgrounds for me to film in. So another thing I really wanna do this weekend and you know, over the course of this video is kind of rejig the layout of my sewing space as well and build myself a fun little corner area that I can make my new filming space so that I always have somewhere dedicated that I can sit down and just start filming that looks cute. So I think um, that's gonna be really exciting. So let me show you what we're currently working with. It's really, really messy. I haven't cleaned up at all. I, I didn't like tidy up before the start of this video at all. This is just like what we're working with. I did do a lot of Christmas, I did do a lot of sewing Christmas gifts like leading up to the holidays. So it's kind of in a complete state of disarray. So I'll show you what it looks like right now. Okay, so here is my sewing space currently. It's really, really, really bad. So not too much has changed with the layout of my space since last year. I'm still storing my fabrics over here in this little cube setup. I have my um, chest of drawers that I store my beading and other crafting supplies in. But right now there's quite a bit of um, random stuff in these drawers. So like batteries, like things I have bought for crafts in the past that I never use. So I kind of want to declutter that and maybe store a lot more of my fabrics in there. I've been collecting all of my scraps for the past year, but it's gotten to the point where they're overflowing in these bags. So I wanna try to get these bags of scraps to fit in this armoire, that would be ideal. I did also order a lot of fabric recently because I was sewing some Christmas gifts, um, but I did actually order a little bit of extra fabric. So I'm going to try to sell the fabric I don't need and then try to reorganize it and fit it all in this um, space here. And I guess along with that, I would also say that I would like to kind of declutter my fabric collection. I don't want to get rid of too much, but I think there's at least a few things in that um, shelving unit that I'm not going to use. So I'm going to try to sell or donate those fabrics so they're not just taking up space in my um, collection because I really don't want to have too much more fabric just sitting in my collection than I do right now because I don't go through it all that fast to be honest. I have a few projects cut out on the floor for other videos. I'm in the middle of making this Oslo coat pattern but it kind of got shelved with all of my Christmas sewing. I have a couple of turtlenecks cut out there that I'm going to be making um, in a vi another video on my channel soon. So those are kind of active projects, which I often just kind of keep on the floor, but I want to try to figure out a better approach for that. Over here, we have my vintage sewing machine and I've just kind of piled random stuff on here, like Christmas cards and all that, but you can see my sewing machine is under here. So clear that off, just kind of organize and declutter. My desk over here, I do use for working from home and sewing. Um, but I want to try to kind of declutter my whole desk and sewing storage area so that the top of my desk stays a lot neater so I don't always have to kind of clear it off before sewing. And yeah, like I mentioned, this is my little organization set of drawers. I really love these. They do need to be, once again, decluttered 
you know, count the number of times I've said decluttered in the last five minutes, but I would like to kind of purge these drawers if I'm not gonna use it, try to get everything back in these drawers. And then this corner is what I'm hoping to make into my filming nook. Yeah, so I'd love to have a nice, neat area behind me that I don't have to worry as much about, that I could just sit down and film. I did also get a few little things to go in my um, setup area. So I got this clothing rack and I wanna kind of have this behind where I'll be filming in my filming area so I can hang like my clothes or fabrics or whatnot up on here to kind of show you guys. Along with that, I got this um, box of nice wooden hangers because I thought it would look really pretty to go with um, the clothing rack. So as you can probably tell, I'm going to have my work cut out for me big time. It's going to be cleaning, decluttering, organizing, moving furniture, um, setting up the, the clothing rack and all that. So I think it's going to take me a couple days. But anyways, enough rambling. Let's get to organizing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now, I've kind of just cleared off the floor quickly, um, got some of the major problems out of the way. Now I wanna sit down and declutter my bead collection. So if you don't know already, I did used to do a lot of beading. There was a point where I made and sold my jewelry and tried to kind of launch a little jewelry business. So at that time I did buy a lot of beads in bulk and I kept a lot of them because I do still love beading. Um, but I was recently doing some beading with friends and I just kind of noticed there's a lot of stuff in here I know I'm never going to use. So I'm going to go through this all now, take out some stuff to donate and keep what I want. wanted to declutter my fabric collection a little bit and I thought that might be interesting for you guys so I thought let's just sit down and do that now. I do have a few bulkier fabrics that you saw before that don't really fit here like the fleeces and things and I'm storing them in the chest of drawers right now but for the most part they all live here and then I also store scraps in a separate bin which we're also going to go through as well. Okay, to start us off, I have some scraps here on the floor. I have some scraps of boiled wool that I'm using to make my boiled wool coat. I would like to keep these, but at the same time, I'm just not sure what I would make with such a small scrap of boiled wool. If you have any suggestions for projects that I could make using the scraps of the boiled wool, please let me know in the comments below. But these are gonna kind of go in my maybe pile because I'd like to keep them but I just don't know what I'd do with them. These, I had tie-dyed some cotton. This one's a jersey, and then this one is kind of like a stiff cotton. I had tie-dyed it for a gift I was making. Um, I don't think I'm going to wear these, to be honest. I think I'm going to pass this tie-dyed kind of canvas along. Next up, I have these scraps of this bamboo jersey from Blackbird Fabrics, and I was using this to make my um, two turtlenecks that I'm going to have a video on my channel about. And there's still a lot of these left, and so I'll definitely make these into like tank tops or t-shirts, depending how much fabric I have left. So this is a keep for sure. I have some scraps of this polyester fabric. It's like a polyester satin. I got it from Fabric Land, and I'm using it to make a bias cut skirt. Although I will say it's a bit slow moving at the moment because I'm finding that working on the bias is such a headache. But that's an aside. Um, I think I'm going to save the scraps of these to make some Christmas gift bags. I know we're past the holidays now, but um, I think the scraps of this would make a great reusable Christmas gift bag because 
I know my family and I think a lot of people are trying to move away from using um, like paper and bows and things like that that you have to throw out and rebuy every year. So just to be more environmentally friendly, I think this would make a gorgeous gift bag. So I'm going to save all the big scraps of this one. So bringing you closer here, and spoiler alert, I don't think I'm actually gonna declutter a ton from this section. I think it's more likely that I'm going to declutter from other sections like my scrap bin, but just to make sure I'm being thorough. Starting up here, I have some power net, some or power mesh, I think it's called, that you can use in activewear. So I got this in three colors, and my idea was to make some fun kind of color blocked activewear out of this. I'd still like to do that, so I'm going to keep this. This is a nice brown double, uh, brown and pink double knit from Mood Fabrics, so I'm going to keep that one. This is the fabric, uh, it's a silk viscose blend. It's like a, a silky lightweight fabric that I'm going to keep. I just got that in Italy. This is an Ankara um, wax print fabric that I bought for a video that I'm hoping to film this spring. This is fabric from a dress um, that I thrifted a long time ago. It's like a rayon, it's like a nice rayon color. And it's got great drape. It's I think it's a dress from the 80s or 90s. So it's a beautiful fabric and I'd love to transform this into a dress that kind of has like a sweetheart neckline and either um, bustier cups or something similar to that. So hopefully this will be like a spring summer project for me this year. So I'll keep that too. This fabric is from Moods, Mood Fabrics. It's um, a lightweight Batiste fabric. And I had bought it to make a jumpsuit for work but to be honest, I just don't really love it anymore. So I think I'm going to try to sell this one or pass it along. I had also bought just this plain black lining fabric of the same weight. So I'll probably hold on to this unless I sell it to someone who would like to buy the lining fabric to go with it. Then I could just sell it to them altogether so they'd have what they need. Okay, over here I have another one of the Mood Fabrics double knits. I'm keeping that. This is some scraps of blue denim from... Uh, my recent jean sewing projects. I use this one to make mock-ups. <laughs> to be honest, I don't really like this one, but I think it's great to have in my collection for doing mock-ups, so I'm going to hold on to it. This is a fabric scrap I had bought. Um, I had intentions to make something out of this, but I just don't think I'm ever going to get around to that project. I bought this like at least three years ago, so I'm just going to pass this one along too. This is the, the rest of the boiled wool I used to make my Telviki sweater and I like the color and everything but similar to what I was saying with the green boiled wool I don't know what I would make out of it necessarily because I don't have that much left so I'm gonna hang on to it for now and kind of think on it um, but if I haven't used this one by next year I might just pass it along. I have two linens here One's like a sea foam color and the other one's a denim blue. I'm keeping these for sure. The only reason I haven't sewn with them yet is because it's been fall, winter recently. So I know come spring, summer, I have plans for these for sure. Okay, moving on down here, I have this, I think, jersey fabric that to be honest, I don't remember why I have bought this. It's not my favorite color, but it's really soft. I think I got it from um, the Canadian brand Simply Five Fabrics. Uh, it might be good to make a tank top out of, but it also might be nice to have as like a tester fabric to test new patterns. So I think for that reason, I'll hold on to it. This is the rest of the fabric I'd use to make my wrap top. I really like it. And hopefully I could make a tank top or something out of the rest of it. This fabric I adore. Um, it's kind of this lightweight polyester chiffon type situation. And I got it from Fabricland when I first started sewing. Um, and I don't think I realized just how difficult something like this would be to work with, but I do still love it and I'd love to, you know, try to use it up this year. So I'm going to hold on to it for now and try to make um, a priority of using this one. Some more denim fabric I have here in this tan color, keeping that. I have some leftover, um, leftover cotton from that pair of pants I had tried to make, but I ended up disliking the pants because this is, in my opinion, this is too lightweight. So I'm going to have to get this out and see how much I have left of this. If I have enough to make like a nice button up shirt or something, I'll keep it. But if there's not enough to do that, I'm going to pass this one along. So I'm going to throw it in my maybe pile for now. Here I have another fabric I got from Fabricland. It was a gift from my mom actually. And it's a nice cotton poplin with a lot of body. Um, not very drapey at all, really stiff. And it's got some stretch in it. I think there's a little poly in it maybe. 
So here's my issue with this one is that I really love it, but I'm a little bit unsure of what to make out of something like this because to me, it's like a little too heavyweight to make a dress. Um, I don't like to make a lot of structured tops. I don't know that it would be great for a skirt. So I'm kind of on the hunt for the right pattern for this. So if you have any suggestions, uh, pattern suggestions for like um, a cotton poplin without a lot of drape, please let me know because I do have one other fabric in my collection like this. Um, I'll just pull it out now to show you. This gorgeous fabric from Mood Fabrics I got a couple of years ago. Um, same story, it's like a cotton poplin with a little bit of stretch. Um, not very drapey, pretty, pretty thick, pretty sturdy. And this is probably one of my favorite fabrics of all time, but I just don't really know what to do with it, to be completely honest. So again, if you have pattern suggestions, please let me know. And then last on this shelf, I have some like cream white natural denim. So holding on to that. Over here, I have a plethora of activewear fabrics. One, two, three, all from different places. This one's from a store on Etsy. This one is from GK Fashion Fabrics, and this bottom one is from Blackbird Fabrics. So I kind of wanted to make like a color blocked um, activewear situation. And I also have the kind of corresponding power net fabrics as well. So I thought that'd be really pretty. So holding on to that, um, this one might be a good one for me to declutter. So I got, I really like this fabric. And if you saw the dress, if you saw me making that McCall's dress on my channel, I made it into like a, a really fun wrap dress, but I just don't wear that dress a lot. It's it's kind of a bold statement with the ruffles, but it is a poly fabric and I don't think it's that comfortable. So I might pass it along, we'll see. I have some linen scraps. I'm gonna hold on to these. So I have a couple pink colors and then I have an orange. I'm gonna hold on to these for making like a color blocked linen shirt. I have some leftover of this block printed fabric. I'm gonna hang on to this too. And then I have this, um, and then I have this guy. This is actually like a, a home, what do you call it? This is like an upholstery fabric. Um, again, I bought this when I first started sewing. I really didn't know anything about choosing fabric correctly. And not to say you can't get creative with it and like use upholstery fabrics for wearing, but this thing is, is heavy. So I don't, I don't think I would necessarily wanna wear this. But I have a project in mind for this guy. I want to make one of those floor poofs for, for all of my scraps. And since I already have this fabric and I like it, I think it's pretty, um, I think I'll use this one to make my floor poof. So I'm gonna hold on to this, but I'm going to rehome it into my chest of drawers because it's just so chunky. I think it would fit better over in the chest of drawers. Okay, last but not least, I've zoomed you in a little bit more. I have some uh, white linen. Actually, this is a linen cotton blend, and I'm super excited to sew with this in spring summer. It's gonna be really nice. I'm planning on making it into like a puff sleeve top and incorporating some white lace details. So really excited for that project. So this can stay. I have some blue activewear fabric here. This one's from GK Fashion Fabrics. This can stay as well. This is some really nice fabric I had bought from, I believe this one is from Core Fabric Store. I'd ordered it in the summer, last summer, because I wanted to try to make a two-piece set with it before my trip to Italy, but I ran out of time. But I'd love to make that two-piece set this spring and summer. So going to hold on to that. It's a really, really pretty fabric, really lightweight. Some more linen scraps. Again, holding on to this. This guy I had ordered to make um, pajamas as a gift for someone, and they turned out really nice. I'd kept the rest because I thought I might use it, but I just don't think I will. So I think I'm going to pass this fabric along as well. I have this scrap from um, of block printed cotton from a dress I made last year. Again, I'm gonna keep this because I think I can maybe mix and match this with some of my linen scraps to make um, something really fun for the summer. So keeping that. Um, this is a scrap from a tablecloth I made as a gift, but it's 100% linen and it's really fun. So holding on to this one to see if I can use it when I make um, some scrap busting projects. This um, stripe fabric is the same as the one I showed you before, only it has no anchors on it, so I'm going to keep that. This is a really pretty block printed cotton that I'm going to make a dress out of, so I'm going to keep this one as well. I had thrifted this tablecloth from Value Village, so it feels like it's soft. It kind of feels like a nice cotton tablecloth, and I really like it, so I'm going to hold on to this to try to make something out of it. I'm picturing this being like a fun summer um, 
picnic style dress. So, okay, and then in the last area over here, we've already talked about this guy at the top. The mood fabric's one I'm keeping. This is some leftover lining fabric from my coat. I don't know what I'm gonna use this for to be honest, but I'll hold on to it at least until I'm done making my coat in case something goes wrong. This is a nice jersey fabric and I got it from Simply Five Fabric. So I'm going to make this into a tank top for the summer this year. I have a couple of activewear knits from Blackbird here. You guys have seen these before on my channel, holding on to that. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna hold on to all of these ones in the last section here. So this is a viscose crepe from Blackbird in the color Lagoon. Keeping this, not exactly sure what it's going to become. Maybe a skirt. This is a viscose from Atelier Brunette. I'd love to make this into a pretty skirt and top this year, or maybe like some flowy pants like the um, Seguro set. I don't know if you guys have seen that pattern. I'll link it up on the screen so you know what I'm talking about, but that really be beautiful for this. I've had this for a while and I'm just so in love with it. I'm a little afraid to cut into it, but I'm also struggle with it because I think it's pretty feminine looking. And so I think if I paired it with a really feminine dress cut, it would end up being like too feminine for my style. So it's just a matter of finding the right pattern for this. And last but not least, some more denim holding on to this as well for sure. It's a nice sturdy bull denim. Okay, here's the aftermath of the decluttering. These are the fabrics I'm going to sell or donate, pass along. Hi guys, it's again the next day and hopefully the last day of this little project. Huge update today. I started rearranging the furniture so I've cleared off my desk completely and I moved the chest of drawers which were here to another place in my apartment and the plan is that my black desk is going to go here and that will be my new like workstation for when I work from home and I did order a little desk from Ikea to go here which will be my kind of sewing desk so the next step will be to move this black black desk over here. I'm really excited and I think it's going to work out well to have everything moved. It sounds so echoey in here now with all this stuff um, moved around but because I ordered a desk from Ikea um, it's going to be another week or two before I can get this vlog out to you which is too bad because I kind of wanted to get it out to you right at the beginning of the new year but I hope you understand why it took a little bit longer. So I'm going to get everything kind of set up how I want it and then in one or two weeks when my desk arrives I'll put it together and finish off the sewing nook and I'll show you that. As you can see, I just finished hanging these frames behind me. I got these frames a long time ago from the thrift store. They came in a set of five. So I have three up on this wall in my sewing room and the other two are actually in my bathroom. They've been there for a while and I love them. They're so cute. And to go in the frames, I ordered some prints. I was looking online at the covers of vintage sewing magazines. McCall's, Butterick, and a lot of the other big sewing companies used to come out with sewing magazines every season to advertise their patterns as well as current fashion trends. And so I thought it really would be fun to have those on my wall. So I got a few photos off the internet. I digitally enhanced them and I just got them printed. So I'm going to go pick them up and put them in the frame, which will be really exciting. <music> Hey guys, welcome to my new sewing space. I am so happy with how this whole project turned out. It ended up taking me quite a bit longer than I expected, 
but I want to show you around my new sewing room, um, explain kind of how everything came together and show you all those little details. So this side of the room is my sewing and filming nook, and I ended up getting this desk from Ikea as my new sewing desk. I'll leave it linked down below because I forget the name, but I really wanted something sturdy that I could have my you know, 25 pound sewing machine sitting on that I wouldn't have to worry about it being flimsy. I find a lot of furniture is really flimsy. So I, so I read a lot of reviews and this desk had great reviews for being really sturdy, which I can say that it is. It's got white legs and then this kind of taupey gray top. And I'm really happy to have this because I can film my sewing clips on this table with this nice background, but I can also put my camera overhead and film clips of me cutting out fabric, pinning pieces together and all that kind of thing. I used to do all of that on the ground, so I'm really happy to have a dedicated place to do it now. But let me show you some more details on this side of the room. So in this corner of the room is where I am now storing my fabrics. Earlier in the video, you saw me decluttering these fabrics. So this is my final fabric collection. And I just kind of reorganized it a little bit so that the same colors were all together, which made it look really aesthetically pleasing. And then you can see, I just put a little few decor pieces on top. I have this nice pothos plant, and then I have some dried roses that I think are really pretty as well. And then up on the wall here, I have the three vintage magazine covers that I, um, printed out and got placed up there. They add a little something to the space and they kind of brighten up this wall and give it a little bit of personality. Over here, I have my clothing rack. But yeah, going forward, I'm going to be displaying some of my Me Made garments on this rack. Uh, I think it looks really pretty in the background of videos and it's a fun way for me to enjoy the pieces I've recently made. And then I really like how these wooden hangers look on the rack as well. So I love that little design detail. So I didn't end up moving my vintage Singer sewing machine. She's still just living right here. Okay, and then panning towards this side of the room. So this side of the room is my new work from home setup as well as just where my computer and desk are. So I can do my work here, but I can also do my video editing. I have my laptop and my monitor. If you remember from the beginning of this video, this desk used to be up against the wall over there where my new sewing desk is. And I have my chest of drawers here. I did move my chest of drawers to another area of my apartment. And I really like having my desk here because I can look out the window when I'm working or editing or anything like that. So stored under my desk, I do have one of my baskets of scrap fabrics. It'd be nice if I could find a better place for this, but um, it tucks under the desk pretty nicely. You can't really even see it and I don't notice it. So for now, it's just going to live underneath the desk. So this used to be on the other side of the room. This is my rolling craft cart where I store almost all of my sewing supplies. So my scissors, rulers, um, patterns are in here, elastic, all that kind of stuff. My little white set of six cubes storing my fabric was against this wall. I just swapped them because I thought that having the fabrics in the back of my videos on the filming side would be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing than having this set of drawers. Okay guys, so this is my new sewing space. I really hope you enjoyed the process of seeing how this all came together for me. This project ended up taking me like two or three weeks. I had wanted to get it done over my time off near New Year's. I had a few days off and I thought I could get it done in a weekend, but because I ended up moving big pieces of furniture like that chest of drawers, my desk, and then having to order and build this Ikea desk, it ended up taking longer than I thought. But as you saw, I'm so pleased because I decluttered a lot from my craft collection. I decluttered a lot of beads, a lot of fabrics, just a lot of things that weren't getting used. So I feel like not only did I kind of do a surface level cosmetic upgrade on this room, I actually did a really deep and clean of it as well. So I just feel so organized and I feel like I know what I have. 
A few last finishing touches for the room will be to put up a little bit more art. Like I wanna put up a painting on the side of my room that has my work desk and my computer because it's just looking a little bit bare right now. I also want to get a cord organizer to organize the cords under both of my desks. So that will be something else that I do. But beyond that, I'm honestly thrilled with this space. I've already sewn here um, a couple times and it's so nice to have a dedicated sewing table. It's something I've dreamed about for a long time. I didn't think I'd necessarily have room for it in my apartment, but I feel really lucky that I have this space and that I'm able to have this sewing corner. So thank you so much for watching this video and rearranging my sewing room with me today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought of the room makeover in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your opinions. But other than that, I will see you in my next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.